everyone. Uh, I'm Chris, um, and I'm presenting content moderation on the formation of online communities, a theoretical framework. Um, and this is joint work with Cynthia Dwork, John Kleinberg, uh, and Manish Raghavan. Great. Um, so I wanted to start by foregrounding some of the uh, motivating observations that uh, we were thinking about when we started this project. And the first is that activity in online communities uh, has you know, real, real world outcomes. Um, and so we're thinking about the January 6th insurrection, which it seems to have been uh, orchestrated uh, via Facebook groups. Uh, content moderation plays an important role in these discussions. And uh, so one of the, the things that we're thinking about was how the choices of uh, Facebook and Twitter affects not only uh, the user base on their platform, but also uh, the uh, user bases of other uh, platforms that perhaps spring up to try and capture some of the users that were banned um, or uh, uh, change the, the, the nature of the discussion. We're also focused on uh, user participation decisions here. And uh, this is a slightly different perspective, I think, than uh, some of the things that we've seen uh, before in the literature. Um, but I really like this quote from uh, the Waller and Anderson paper uh, talking about Reddit in uh, 2016 after the uh, Trump election. And polarization seems to have been primarily driven by the arrival of of new users, and, and this is something that we, we really hope to, to provide a, a, um, uh, some insight into. It's also good to remember how uh, content moderate, I'm sorry, the, the, the slide titles are not showing up, but I'll just have to tell you. Um, content moderation takes a, a lot of different forms, and it's not just uh, sort of what is, what is legal. Uh, communities and platforms have a lot of discretion about what kinds of moderation policies they for us. So uh, one of my favorite examples is the subreddit r slash awe, um, which is kind of ambiguously named. Uh, uh, it's a, a subreddit for cute and cuddly images. But um, uh, if not for content moderation, you might be confused and think that uh, sad awe is also um, uh, sort of uh, relevant content for the subreddit. And so we've found that uh, in a lot of the discussions, content moderation is viewed as ad hoc or ideological. Um, but since it has so many practical uh, implications, we uh, were focused on thinking about how uh, strategic or deliberate choices on the part of platforms may interact with user preferences. And so an example we'll return to is the, the basic observation or the basic question, why do platforms with different policies uh, have different user populations? Our goal here is to provide just a, a theoretical framework um, to, to think about platform choices and some analysis that goes along with it. Um, and today, our, our, my goal is really just to explain the model and some of the, the broader implications that follow from it. But uh, I won't go into too much detail about the, uh, the uh, main results. OK, good. Uh, so we're thinking about how to model uh, content moderation, and there are two basic ingredients here that we're looking to have. One is uh, users who are making choices about whether to participate on the platform. And it's important that these uh, user participation decisions are maybe interact with each other, right? So they, they interleave uh, uh, my choice to, to stay or join on a platform is uh, influenced by uh, others who are, are present or absent, um, and that I uh, that users make uh, ongoing decisions about whether to participate in the platform. And second, that the platforms are determining what speech is allowed. And we can instantiate this by thinking about a latent space of potential content where users der are deriving utility from content uh, depending on its position in the space and producing content from some location in the space. And we'll call that location their speech point. And so for now, let's think about the real line. And you can imagine uh, the left-right political spectrum in the US. Um, but there are many other things that we can describe with this kind of uh, one-dimensional axis, such as, say, intensity to, of dedication to baking, or cycling, or chess, or level of 
math sophistication or, or age continuum. Our, our, our users will consist of uh, you know, uh, users index 1 to n who each have an interval. Uh, and that describes what content they like to consume. Anything inside the interval uh, will uh, give them a positive utility AI and uh, outside of the interval, uh, negative utility BI. And we'll also give them a speech point uh, inside this interval. And so we'll posit that they're going to participate if they would derive non-negative utility and not if they'd suffer disutility from it. We'll allow for personalization or uh, a noisy personalization where uh, the platform is able to filter out some of, perhaps able to filter out some of the content that users uh, dislike. And so uh, uh, content inside their interval, see with rate, say, normalized to one, and content outside of the interval uh, at rate uh, lambda i. Combining all of those parts together, we can write down a utility function. Or we can sort of more succinctly write down a participation threshold. That's theta i, which says the proportion of content that a given user would need to see in, uh, uh, inside their interval to be willing to, to participate. We'd also need to specify a set of initial users and an order in which they make their decisions. And we're just going to say that uh, for each user, uh, it's a finite amount of time until, uh, uh, until they next make their next decision. And, and our results will, will hold for, for all of these, you know, any set of, of users or any set of uh, switching order. We'll consider uh, moderation policies that satisfy some natural properties. And the first one is that it's based on user speech, not their preferences. And secondly, there's this notion of internal consistency, that uh, if speech is allowed uh, at points x and z, any point uh, in between x and z should also be allowed. And we'll call these moderation windows. And we won't consider the case that users are changing their speech either in response to the policies or in response to the content of other users. Okay, so returning to our uh, uh, question from the very beginning, how can a platform with some moderation be larger than one without it? Let's consider just this very basic case in which for all users, they're uh, totally intolerant of content outside of their interval. So they must see content you know, uh, only willing to participate if there's only content inside their interval. And look at this small five person population. In the case that there's no moderation, you can see how uh, very quickly, the platform might hollow out on the basis of uh, uh, users one after another deciding that there is someone here that I don't like hearing from, and uh, so I'm going to leave, and, and you end up with an almost empty platform. But if there is moderation, then, uh, for example, if we set a window which includes uh, users 1, 2, 3, and 5, but not user 4, then it's pretty easy to see that for any switching order, you're able to uh, preserve a, a much larger uh, proportion of the users in this community. And so user four was eliminated by, uh, uh, by fiat, by, by uh, being banned from the platform. And, and user five uh, uh, would leave on their own, even though they're allowed to participate. And so you can generalize this kind of example and show that uh, there, you can create arbitrarily large gaps between the size of a, a platform that is unmoderated and one that is moderated. And so we should think about this as a sort of uh, uh, pragmatic explanation for why uh, a platform might uh, moderate content, um, that it's almost necessary for the sake of, of self-preservation. Okay, and then just very briefly through some of the other results that were uh, we're studying in this paper, we're looking at how effective window-based moderation can be compared to a theoretical optimum. This optimum you should think of as like an invite-only session or as an invite-only model where users are very, uh, you know, are able to be excluded at arbitrary, for arbitrary reasons, not, not, not requiring convexity, not requiring, uh, you know, speech-based. And we can show that actually for uh, users who are sufficiently intolerant, so they're requiring that their communities be very hom homogeneous. Invite-only platforms uh, are, or moderation windows are able to capture constant fraction approximations of, uh, of invite-only platforms. 
Um, but on the other hand, it's not necessarily true when users' uh, participation thresholds start to drop down lower. We also look at scalability, so how platforms uh, who don't know very much about their populations may be able to sample, learn about their populations, and uh, we can show that the uh, uh, it just requires like a very small sample uh, of users to, to learn, uh, uh, again, like a constant fraction approximation of the best window uh, with high probability. We look at personalization. And first, you just notice that with perfect personalization, there's no need for moderation. And this may be sort of the platform, the, the strategy that many platforms are, uh, that are trying to appeal to say like a huge number of users are employing, right? It's impossible to uh, have everyone see a bit of everything. So we should uh, uh, personalize more. But on the other hand, if personalization is not perfect, there are cases where increasing personalization uh, can drive people away. And so the example we like here is uh, cases where uh, increasing personalization can draw on some minority of users into a community that drives sort of a much larger group away. And so uh, you could think about like Celtics fans who wouldn't participate in a general NBA subreddit. Uh, with a little bit of more personalization, they'd be willing to participate, but they're so uh, obnoxious that uh, you know, everyone else uh, is just unwilling to see this this amount of Celtics content, and and uh, uh, you know, and would would leave. And so this uh, uh, this is true, even though there's no real sensible moderation policy that excludes Celtics fans because it's sort of definitionally in scope. Great. Finally, uh, we're looking at competition between platforms and how uh, uh, competition can introduce a, a market for rules. And so depending on the population, you can see uh, cases in which a large stable platform uh, is able to defend itself quite uh, sort of easily from insurgent uh, new agile platforms trying to attract some fraction of their users off the platform, and other situations in which large stable platforms are quite vulnerable to, uh, to uh, a new entrance to the market. Um, there are many more directions that we hope to explore, um, both empirically and theoretically, but um, for now, uh, thanks so much. And uh, yeah, looking forward to talking more at the poster session. Thank you.